Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking everything about circuits. First, I wanna talk about why would you ever wanna learn about circuits? Why would you ever wanna understand circuits? If you wanna understand electronic devices, it's imperative that you understand the three big components, at least in my view, that compose them. The first component is the circuit, the second component is the code, and the third component is the composition of these two. So, if you wanna understand electronic devices, electronic devices, you probably need to take the time to understand circuits. So in this video, we're gonna take care of everything. But first, I wanna preface, if you're here to learn about breadboards or circuit boards or custom printed circuit boards, this video is not the right place. A video is coming soon on that, but for the time being, I'm sure you can find another great tutorial on the internet. Today's video though, we're gonna be talking everything conceptual about circuits, a complete overview so that you understand exactly what's happening beneath those wires and under the skin. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, circuits are really exciting, but before getting onto the great stuff, we need to take the time to understand electricity. Electricity, in broad terms, is the concept of flowing ions. So if you take a look, if you follow this little guy's instructions, take a look at this atom that I've drawn here. You see that we have a negatively charged electron, a positively charged proton, and of course, neutrons, which no one really cares about. Electricity, in a sense, is the transfer of these ions between one atom and another atom. So if we follow this diagram here, we have two atoms, right? These atoms have electrons and protons. Now, most often in electric circuits, electrons are transferred between atoms within a wire. So imagine that this is a wire, a conductive wire, maybe a copper one. Electrons are transferred from one atom to the next, creating a transfer of charges throughout the wire, and that's what we call current. Now, sometimes protons are also transferred, as you can see here, but given that they're inside the nucleus, it's a lot more rare, and electrons are usually what's being transferred. I want to clarify something before we get on with the next step. Electricity is often used in a general sense, and as a result, when we're talking about electricity and circuits, we rarely use it to define the specs of a circuit and the tech. Usually, instead, it's mentioned casually with its three properties, its three big properties having much more importance in the construction of a circuit. Now, what are these famous three properties? Electric current, resistance, and voltage. So if we take a look at this uh, image of a river here, we see that just as the flow of water in a river is called a current, the flow of electricity through a wire is called an electrical current. So let's draw this out. Imagine we have a wire connecting two items of a circuit. Well, let's just draw this. This is a wire. We have one item here and another item here. In this wire, we'll have things, uh, we'll have ions being transferred from one atom to the next atom, to the next atom, to the next atom, and finally to our final destination where they'll do the loop again and come back. That's how we complete a circuit. Electrical current works in the same way as water. As you see here, I've outlined H2O because each of these little strands of water is composed of H2O particles, like you see here. They're all flowing down the river, maybe having a good time, maybe not, but they're being forced through the confined space that's transporting them from one place to the next. Electrical current works in the same way as it's a flow of charged particles through a conductive space, like we've drawn right here. Now let's talk about resistance. Since the river analogy works so well, I decided to use it again for this example. So let's discuss what happens when your river, like in this example here, is not simply perfect. There's some obstacles in the river. Here we have some rocks, a log, happy rock, whatever the case may be, there's always something obstructing the flow of water from destination A to destination B. These things obstructing the flow of water are inducing what's called resistance. The water is experiencing resistance by hitting these objects. Then it has to go around, then it has to meander through here, and then finally escape through here, which greatly slows the rate that it actually travels from point A to point B. In an electrical current, you can do the exact same thing. So let's take it back to our example here. In, in electrical circuit diagrams, uh, a resistor is denoted as this. That's a horrible illustration as well, but you get the picture. So instead of having just ions flowing from one destination, A, to second destination, B, we'll have an obstructor. So let's go ahead and erase this here and add in a resistor. This actually slows the rate of the current, and we actually have a term for that. That term is called voltage. Voltage is, and this is a V, is the current denoted by an I multiplied by the resistance. Voltage is usually what we talk about when referring to the amount of a power that should be supplied in the circuit. Now that we've gone over everything you really need to know about electricity, let's take it back to the very top and discuss what's most important. Most important. So what's most important to understand about electricity is that in the end, it's a type of energy. Electricity is just, just energy. Why is this important to understand? Well, the circuit is all about getting electricity to be converted into some other form of energy to do some cool or interesting operation. For example, electricity can be converted into light energy through an LED turning on, or it can be converted into sound energy with by playing a sound. 
or it can be conver converted into kinetic energy by moving a motor. All right, so now we've covered absolutely everything you will probably need to know about electricity if you're a beginner with circuits. So this leads us to the three big components of circuits that you've probably been able to deduce by now, but now we're actually gonna clarify them. So the first big component of a circuit is the source. Source of what exactly? Yes, the source of power. The power source is often a battery, but if you're testing certain codes with a microcontroller, you might use a laptop as a power source and just connect it via a USB cable. But if you don't know what any of this means yet, don't worry, it'll be detailed later. The second crucial component to a circuit is a conductive path. Conductive, conductive path. Now, what exactly is a conductive path? Yes, it's like the copper wire we referenced earlier. A conductive path enables the transfer of ions from one atom to another inside an enclosed space. So um, this can be a copper wire or, for example, printed etches on a breadboard or circuit board. And if you don't know what any of these are, don't worry about it. You need to know just a place where ions can be conducted. Finally, the last component of a circuit is a load. Now, it's a fairly foreign word for something that we've been describing, describing all along. And that's essentially a component that requires the input of electrical power from the source to operate. So if we want to illustrate how all three of these components work together, we need to draw it out. The source of power brings power through a conductive path, conductive path, to the load, which will use this power to execute some sort of function, and then the ions will be transferred back to the source of power. That's why, for example, a battery has two ends, a plus and a minus n. Just like that, we've reached the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video, if you found it helpful, if it helped you in any sort of way, zap that like button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Lastly, please check out the website linked in the description below. It's what inspired my passion for circuits. It's what I'm working on currently building right now. If you want to see what that's all about, hit the link in the description below, and you'll even see some of the previews to future videos that are to come about circuits. All right, 